Welcome back. Let's go and explore a little bit around where we are. I don't really know where we are, because we were just sent to the collector ship without being told where it is. Apparently we're in the Baylor system. A couple of other systems around here. Let's take a look at the big picture. Tolova, Solvik, and something else. Acer, apparently. And... Let's see... I guess we'll uh, start here, actually. Look at some of these planets, see if there's... stuff to... scan, as usual. And then we'll look around the area to see if there's more stuff to scan, but also see if there's any... Uh, side quests to be found. There were a lot of rich planets in this system, and even one in the asteroid belt, kind of hidden. At least you know that you've missed it if you haven't been there, because then it wouldn't say 100%. Let's check um, the rest of this uh, cluster, starting with Talava. Or Talava, or Talava, or... I have no idea, really. detected an anomaly. There's an anomaly here on Tatus. A desert of whitish potassium salts and reddish iron oxides, Tatus is far enough away from its parent star to have a tolerable surface temperature. Though it has only a trace atmosphere of carbon dioxide and oxygen, it is still hospitable enough for criminals and determinist systems to use it as a staging base. Turian patrols sometimes fly through the area, looking to preempt jailbreak attempts on Matrim's prisons. Travel advisory. Unregistered starships have been spotted in the vicinity of Tatus. Civilian travel is not recommended. Let's see what this anomaly is. Something. Surface scans detect one Immer heavy mech signature matching an unknown, possibly pirate, registration. Mech appears to be disabled, but broadcasting a looping message. Message does not appear to be a distress signal. Resource scans indicate large quantities of mineral resources available, but obscured behind walls of dense stone. The message said something about um, getting the mech working. Well, I guess uh, would. We'd better check it out, then. Let's see what this system holds. Um, let's see, I'm going to take... Zaid and Thane. I've got four points again. Hmm, overload or combat drone. I think I'll do overload first. Your pulse now damages synthetic enemies so brutally that they explode on death. That's heavy overload or area overload. You have increased your pulse's strength to cover a wide area, making it easy to hit multiple targets. And that's actually what I want. 
because I specialized incinerate, incinerate on increased damage, so I'm specializing overload on multiple targets. It kind of keeps things spread out. This is also in preparation for Mass Effect 3, although it is possible to um, reassign your powers in Mass Effect 3 as often as you like, in fact. But um, I don't really like doing that very often, and specializing on area overload can be very useful in uh, Mass Effect 3. But it's also useful here, so anyway. Zaid, um, apparently I haven't used him in a while. I'll give him a, a veteran point and a disruptor ammo point. Oh, and I forgot Thane. But I used him fairly recently, so... Probably not much of a problem. Plus, I can always do it now. I'm detecting a large supply of resources buried deep within the canyon walls. Heavy explosives will be required to excavate them. We're apparently not allowed to uh, shoot this mech. Well, it does pull my gun away when I point at it, but can I... Okay, I can actually still shoot it. Not that it does anything. Apparently we can activate it. But I forgot to level up Thane. Oh, but I don't want to. Disabled mech. There's a data path. Let's read that first. I paid Harrod good money for this useless heap of signal error. Error. Detected serious caches of resources here on this planet, but... Alright. I said, sure, the thing leaks fuel like a volus after a mug of wrinkle, but I can deal with that. So he took off and laid out a trail of power cells leading from where I unload the mech to... Bad package, please restart. So it could at least get the thing moving. And now, a legal fault detective, won't even move. Damn that swindling Elcor. Hey, that's Herod from Herod's Emporium, the guy who was um, trying to um, oppress the Quarian. Apparently he also sells faulty stuff. Hopefully none of the stuff we bought from him was faulty. Let's try and activate this Mac. Piece of sh signal error. Yeah, sure. But apparently it's only a bypass away from being possible to activate. Okay, so apparently we are going to use this thing to excavate resources, but it runs out of power all the time. Power cell required. Okay. Well, there's one here. And you know, why can't I do this with my heavy weapons? Which are, you know, actually more powerful. If I had an M920K and I could blow the whole mountain up. power cells. And just in time. Wait, how did he place the power cells here when this was actually blocked? And he needed the mag to excavate this. That is kind of weird. Okay, so well, apparently we just followed the mech. Alternatively, we just walk on ahead, looking for power cells. Rather than waiting for it. Hostiles at our nine. Oh. There's a Baron here. Oh, 
What the hell are you two doing? Looks like the power cell is behind where those two um, Varen were. So I best get it and get the mech moving again. I hope I didn't miss a power cell. That's the really annoying thing here is that if you miss one, then you'll run out near the end. And you have to run back the whole distance of the map trying to look for the one you missed. But uh, there's more here. So I think I got them. Done. They're certainly useful on this map. We've so far faced... on this map, on this mission. We've so far faced exactly two enemies. And I took both of them out. Well, maybe this heavy mech will uh, suddenly decide it doesn't like us anymore. In which case... failed to see how a heavy mech was an efficient way to mine this place. But hey, whatever. And apparently we're not taking it with us. Piece of crap indeed. And we got 5,000 platinum out of it. Really? 5,000 platinum? All this trouble? You can get that just from scanning a planet from orbit. Why do we need to do this? Oh well. Recovered buried cache of resources. Ymir Mac unsalvageable. 156 experience. 7500 credits. So, oh, that's nice, of course. We get credit credits for doing the mission. We didn't find any. And 5000 platinum. The uh, side quests are sure a lot quicker when you don't have to drive around in the Mako for half an hour. Alright, with that taken care of, I guess we'll continue our explorations here. Well, Tatis itself was worth scanning. It was rich, so I'll go and do that. more resources from scanning this place than I got from uh, doing that one mission. Let's check the next system. Solvik. Solvik Multimedia is the company that makes Hypercam, which I'm not using to record this game, but I do use it to record other games. Frivaldi. Poor. That's not worth doing. There's a moon. Anomaly detected. With an anomaly on Sinmara. Surtur's moon Sinmara has been used for many generations to monitor its parent star Solvik. It has no atmosphere to interfere with solar observational equipment, which is critical at this juncture. The star recently showed signs of erupting prematurely into a red giant. Wait, didn't uh, Haystrom star did that too? Another uh, case of... Uh, Dark matter buildup, perhaps? In preparation for the day when the critical warning goes out, the extranet channel from Sinmar's research station is given top priority throughout the comm buoys in the system. The chances of such a signal being received over the sun's magnetic interference at that time is low, but relegating it to a lower channel proved politically untenable. 
That sounds bad. You do actually get resources from scanning for an anomaly, if they, there happen to be resources near the anomaly. Planetary scans indicate that the Sinmara colony is vulnerable to its sun's hazardous solar flares. Malfunction detected in colony's magnetic shield. Shield must be reactivated to avoid exposing colony to unstable solar activity and potential annihilation. Apparently this is an unmanned research station, so there's nobody around to uh, fix this. Good thing we happen to be in the area, then. This is a solo mission, so we don't get to pick any uh, squad mates. There also won't be any fighting, so it doesn't really matter that much. Despite the fact that the situation here is similar to Haystrom, there's no trouble standing in the sun. But apparently the equipment doesn't like being exposed to the sun. Well, it's definitely not a very interesting planet. In terms of the terrain. Let's see what's up with that magnetic shield. Why the hell are there explosive crates here? So we get to blow stuff up, I suppose. And some palladium. It raised this stuff when we got here, so I guess we need to use this. Let's bypass that, whatever it is. Security here as high as ever. Let's see. Well, shield generator activate. That seems to be uh, the simple way out. Except it doesn't work. Shield control bypass. Shield cannot be activated because the generator is offline. But we couldn't activate the generator. I don't have anything with the cooling unit either. Control switch. Ah, I see. Apparently, you can only power one thing at a time. Reminds me of the uh, steam power valve on Crater Island on Riven. Warning, generator overheating. Ah. That didn't work. Well, at least it didn't blow up. Guess we need to activate cooling first. There we go. Let's just hope that doing this won't deactivate the cooling. No, it doesn't. Seems to work. And then finally, activate the shields. That should do the trick.
restored magnetic fields, keeping Sinmara colony safe from catastrophic solar activity. Credit reward transfers from Sinmara colonists. I don't get why there were colonists there. I mean, if they're... Uh, the description of the planet implied that it was an unmanned research station. And, uh... If there were colonists there, why couldn't they switch it on? Why did I have to do it? Didn't they have a shuttle or something that couldn't get there? Anyway, we got 7,500 uh, credits out of it and some palladium, so I guess that'll have to do. Also, that was a really simple puzzle. Doesn't even really qualify as a puzzle. I do like that they're at least uh, trying to be a bit more varied in what the uh, side quests are about, rather than just uh, enter building, shoot mercenaries, which tended to be the case in Mustard 1. Let's see if there's anything else worth scanning. No, wait, that's in Mara again. I overshot the target. And it is. And that's it for the Kilston Rift, for the time being, anyway. Now, next up... I kind of want to... Uh, wait, Thane shows up. How may I help you, Commander? Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Thane would like to see you down in life support on the crew deck. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. Good luck out there, Shepard. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Okay, well, I guess um, and next I'm actually going to talk to Thane and deal with the private messages. What the hell? From Tombs. What the hell kind of game are you playing, Shepard? You did the body act when I had the gun on that Cerberus scientist, telling me you understood. Now I find out you're working for Cerberus? Tests were done on me that you can't even imagine. For years, Cerberus did them. They tortured me. They used me as a damn lab rat. And now you're teaming up with them like they're just another merc band? I've got my own merc team now, Shepard. And I kill any Cerberus team I can find. If I run into you, don't expect any different. Corporal Toombs is the guy who was subjected to those fresher mall experiments. And we uh, talked him out of killing that one other guy. And I can sort of understand what he's uh, feeling. Unfortunately, we can't write him a reply tell him that no, we're not actually working for Cerberus. We're just temporarily working with Cerberus. Because our goals happen to align for the moment. Purely a uh, matter of convenience. And we want to go talk to Thane. Since we only did side quests, I don't really... Uh, uh, wait. I don't really feel like talking to anyone else. Not really much point to it. Shepard. Is there something wrong? Yes. Now that you are here, though, it seems more difficult to talk about. Are you feeling sick? I could get the doctor. No, no. Though I suppose that is a part of it. My mortality has me... Dwelling on things. I had a family once. I still have a son. His name is Kolyat. I haven't seen him for a very long time. How long has it been since you talked? Ten years. He showed me some of his schoolwork and asked if we could dance crazy. We did that when he was younger. What sort of dance is that? It's... I checked my extranet contacts. I expect an update on my next target. The console plays music. Oh, 
unfashionable. Kolya jumps into the room. My father runs around in circles. I scoop him up, toss him into the air. He shrieks, laughs, spin me. The console beeps. I put him down. Click the message. Father, he pleads, tugs my sleeve. I need to read this, I say. I don't look at him. Did something happen to them? I abandoned them. Oh, not all at once. Nothing dramatic, no sneaking out in the middle of the night, no final argument or slammed door. I just did my job. I hunted and killed across the galaxy. Away on business, my wife would tell people. I was always away on business. You never mentioned this before. Why now? When my wife departed from her body, I attended to that issue. I left Kolyat in the care of his aunts and uncles. I have not seen him or talked to him since. That's not the choice I expected. Why didn't you raise him yourself? My body is blessed with the skills to take life. The Hanar honed them in me. I have few others. I didn't want that life for Kolyat. I hoped he would find his own way. If he hated me, so be it. He would not have shared the path of sin. I used my contacts to trace Kolyat. He has become... disconnected. He does what his body wills. You'll have to explain that one to me. Disconnected. The body is not our true self. The soul is. Body and soul work as one in a whole person. When the soul is weakened by despair or fear, when the body is ill or injured, the individual is disconnected. No longer whole. What's wrong with him? Is he hurt? Something happened that should not have. He knows where I've been, what I've done. I don't know his reasons, but he has gone to the Citadel. He's taken a job as a hitman. I would like your help to stop him. He is... This is not a path he should walk. You don't hire a raw rookie for a contract killing. I'm afraid someone may have seen we share a name, and assumed we share skills. I don't know why he would accept the task. To be closer to you, maybe? That thought haunts me more than any other. Maybe he name-dropped you to get hired. It's possible, but I don't think so. It doesn't seem right. My name. He should not respect it. Thane, I don't have your contacts and I don't have your tracking skills. Why do you need my help for this? I don't need your help. I want it. The last time I saw my son, they wrapped her body in sea vines. Weighted it with stones. He tries to pull from me. Calls for her. The Hanar lift her off the platform. They sing like bells. The fire has gone to be kindled anew. He begs them not to take her away. They let her body slide into the water. He hits me. Don't let them. Stop them. Why weren't you? It rains. It always rains on Kaje. Warm water pours down his face. I didn't mean to make you relive that. Perfect memory. It is sometimes a burden. What made him go to the Citadel? Years ago, I prepared a package for him. A relic of my ill-spent life. I had Volus Bankers store it, and arranged for delivery when I died. He acquired it early. I don't really know how. I did wet work on the Citadel around the time his mother died. That may be why he went there. I'll get us to the Citadel as soon as possible. Thank you, Shepard. I'll be meditating until you need me. Interesting. Well, we'll definitely have to help them with that. Family matters, always important. He need not worry. We'll have to go to the Citadel again. We also have to go to the Citadel for Garrus. I think we know all of the... More, uh, all of the loyalty missions now, don't we? Not Tali's before. But next up, I actually want um, to do Zaid's loyalty mission, which is actually the first one we learned about. At um, Zoria, in the Esmar frontier. Again, you, despite all of these claims of having to hurry or going no there immediately. You, oh, okay, thanks. Um, it doesn't really matter what order you do them in or how long you wait, as usual, in these kinds of games. 
And I want to do the heat next. It's becoming very difficult to actually read what we have to do. <laughs> or where we can go. There's way too much stuff on the map right now. It's kind of a problem. Um, it'll get better once once we do some of the missions. Zaid is all the way over here. The Esmar Frontier. As well as one of the Firewalker missions. The DLC. Another DLC. Because Zaid is also a DLC, of course. Um, let's see. Oh, apparently, we need to go to another system to help Zaid. I guess we will, then. The fire system. Now, his mission had to do with the leader of the Blue Suns, Juan Vito Santiago. Let's see uh, what's going on there. Zoria. Mud, sweat and spores is how Blue Sun's mercenaries characterize the planet that gave birth to their home office. This lush garden world is known for its heavy plant and fungal life, creating spectacular jungle zones over much of, it eight, much of its eight continents. Despite persistent problems with rot and rust, Zoria attracts investors and corporations from all throughout the galaxy. Since it has exploited only a fraction of its potential resources, the Blue Suns dominate the security contracts on Zoria, so much that residents describe them less like a monopoly and more like a conquering regime. Okay. Quite a large population here, apparently. Reasonably warmed uh, planet. Let's see if we can help Zaid.